Our Father, is it in heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. He spoke faith for us to bring things into being. Do you understand? So a lot of people, they pray, um, which is good to pray, but you waiting on God to do something, but God is only waiting on you to activate your faith, um, which he put in his word to make some things happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? He already put healing there for you. But you're going to have to look at what he put in Isaiah 53 and agree with that word and stick and speak that word out until it becomes real to you in your spirit man. And until that thing begins to manifest in your being. So we understand that the principles of the kingdom as us being kingdom people, we're not wishing or hoping. We are, we are making things happen because the king show us how to make things happen, how to bring things into existence in this world. So that means that it doesn't matter what's happening into the economy, it don't have to affect me. It doesn't matter what's going in the world, it don't have to affect me. It doesn't matter what's going on all over the place, everybody going crazy, everybody losing their mind. I got me what my constitution book. My, you see, the kingdom is your constitution book that lets you know what your king thinks, where, where you come from thinks, and how it is you bringing uh, the resources from the spiritual world to the natural world. Amen. So now, what would be the difference between you and, and a person that's normal, that don't believe in Jesus, if you don't have your constitution, and if you don't have the word? Because a lot of time, religion is a whole bunch of wish, uh, wishing and hoping. And people say, turn around seven times, and this is going to happen. That's a lie. It don't happen that way. I'm sorry to say it. And, and I know it sounds nice. It sounds real nice to say, 
jump up 10 times and God just going to do it. Well, it's nice, but after you go home, you're still hungry. And now your faith is being debated because somebody said something to you and you don't see it. And you say, if God is God, then why is it these things I'm hearing don't happen? Has anybody ever experienced that in religion, in church? You think that you just don't get it by just doing a couple, you know, you know what, what it's called religion. Because that's what religion is. Doing routines and doing certain things, servicing and thinking God's going to work that way. But the kingdom works just like the government works a certain way, right? Do you remember, Brian, we talk about if somebody want a um, food stamp? What is the thing that you got to do? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about something we all can understand. You want food stamp, you don't just wish and pray over it. You know where to go. And you know what papers you need to apply to get food stamp. Well, the kingdom, you have to understand every government works by rules and regulation. If you want to drive a car, what do you do? Go, go where? You go to DMV and you apply for a license, you take the test, and then if you actually want to get a, a driver's license, guess what you do? You take a test. Read the book, you take a test, and the teacher um, grades you according to your, you know, how you do in the test. You, you know, let me talk about that. A lot of us want what God had, but we don't want to take the test that God gives you. And a lot of times, what we call in the test is the devil. And, and that's the key about us. When, when you taking when, when you are about that much, um, you don't got that much, you know, you got a nickel. You got two dollars in your pocket and the test come. God said, give it all. He said, oh, love, man. You know, it's either I'm walking or I'm giving it. Not knowing if you give that two dollars, which is passing the test, that God has something more for you than you ever know. A lot of us are crying and we're saying the devil is doing this. The devil is doing that. But I believe it's not the devil, it's the test. Oh, God, have mercy. No, no. What, what man is going to let you run the house without testing your character? You ain't going to watch my children. You're going to do, you know, you're not going to have to run to my house when I'm not around and I don't test your character and your integrity. I don't uh, test your giving. I don't test none of those things. You see, you've got to understand what the principle of the kingdom is the soul so of the word of God. And God don't have to test you to see that. Are you going willing to stand on the word even when you don't see nothing happen? Right. Even there's contrary winds going on, but you say to yourself, I'm standing on the word of God. I'm standing in the principle of the God's kingdom. I don't care what nobody said. Because there's a lot of times when the word is given, you got to find out that everything in the natural does not coincide with what God says in his word. That's why they said that we, you know, that, 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 that the things which are seen, you know, are, are subject to change. They're not eternal. But the thing which is unseen is what? Eternal. Because guess what? What is physical is able to be transformed by the written word. Oh, God have mercy. What, what is, you see, there's nothing that can really change natural things in this planet except for spiritual things, mm -hmm. which is God's word, which is spirit, who can change the natural things. And when you begin to put that word in your mouth and speak, put that word until it become real to you and you speak, speak it out just the same way God. So don't take any word and you see, the, let me help you along. Just because you take that word that say, my God shall supply all my need. You say, Pastor said that, and I'm going to take that word and believe it. Now, you got, see, the book of Joshua said, we got to meditate only day and night. You don't say, you don't take that word for two minutes. You look at it, you say, Lord, you know, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And you went on throughout the day and watched TV and, and, and eat, drink, and you say it one time. It don't work that way. The book of Joshua said, you meditate on it day and night. Then you shall make your way. What? Successful. Success is not given to people who are not willing to discipline themselves. Yes. Oh, glory. It's not, it is discipline. If a guy is going, um, you know, you know, to the um the Olympics, he trained four years for 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 maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes of a, of a thing that he got to do. So you got to train yourself on the word of God. Mm -hmm. 
you got to understand the principle of the kingdom. You got to keep hearing it. Sometimes when you go to church, people need um, new revelation. But what did you do with the old one? What what did you do with the old revelation you got last year? Huh? What did you do with it? What did you do with that revelation? Did you grow in it? Did you become better on it? Wait a minute. Have you matriculated in love yet? Have you matriculated in forgiveness yet? Come on. That's right. Or are we, are we still working and being offended? See, I live an offensive life. You can't offend me, even if you try. Do you know that offense keeps you from receiving from God? It blocks it. You can curse me all you want. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. You know? Move on. If you're going to move in the kingdom... You're going to have to live people free. Amen. Amen. You, you have to actually don't care about what people think. Amen. Lord have mercy. There's always going to be somebody that says it don't work. The word don't work. And try it. Or they're trying to swing you over there in Zion. And trying to make you believe in something that don't work. But guess what happened? It does work. Come on. The word, the word does what? Word. Always work. Always. Huh? If the word is not working, guess what's wrong? Something is wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Huh? If the word is not working, guess what's wrong? Something is wrong with us if the word of God is not what? Working. working. All right. God's kingdom is not of this world. Do you know that Jesus didn't come to die for all, you know, religion? He didn't die. There's nowhere in my Bible I saw that he died for you to become a Baptist, Pentecostal, or anything else. He didn't talk about, you know, be a good Pentecostal or jump around and do all these things. He did not die for religion. And religion, it is the thing that's keeping people from coming to God. Well, I'm, I'm talking about it. Religion is the thing that's keeping people from coming to God. Mm -hmm. Huh? Amen. All right. My, my brother over there is hot. Put him in the AC for him until he gets cool off. <laughs> um, or you guys can open the door, let the wind flow a little bit. Is that good? Okay, Brian, can you open the door for just a little bit, let the air flow? All right? Um, all right. Now, religion is the thing that's keeping people from coming to God. A whole bunch of rituals, a whole bunch of things that we're doing trying to come to God. But my Bible said that come all who are heavy laden and I shall give you what? Rest. But religion say come perfect before God see you. Uh -huh. Come perfect before God does that. You got to dot the, the, uh, the I and cross the T before. Now God said come as you are. And as you get to know me in relationship, there'll be a transformation in your life. Come get to know me. So this is what this is about. God did not come to die for no religion. Huh? Some people die a Baptist. I die a Baptist. That's what they say. I die a Pentecostal. That's not what it's all about. That's not what it's all about. I see some good people die in religion. Some good people that loves God, that really want to get to know God. But the minute that you speak to them about the kingdom, but Jesus came to die for a kingdom. He, if you read your Bible, in book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the book of Acts, for 40 days, Jesus preached about the things of the kingdom. If you look at Paul, Paul spoke about the kingdom. He did, you see, the epistles is what he was speaking to deal with the churches that he's building. But that's not what he preached. He preached what? In Acts 19, if you look at it, he said that Paul preached about what? The kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom? The government of God. God's rule on earth. Oh God. Oh God. God's rules on earth. Do you know that as part of the kingdom, the ecclesia was supposed to be uh, a group in the Hebrew. It's supposed to be a senate body or called out people 
that comes to make a decision on behalf of a you know, nation, people. And when they put the word church, it was not supposed to be in there when they translated according to King James. You know, when they wrote the Bible, they're saying, I grease your palm a little bit and, you know, whatever. So put church in there. But we are not, the church is not, you know, the building of God, but the body is, the ecclesia. Uh, we are the church. We are the ecclesia that meets in the building. <laughs> we are the government of God that meet in the building, but it's, this building is nothing but bricks and mortar. So when people say, oh, the church going to close down. No, baby, I won't close down. The building will, but not me. <laughs> as long as I'm here, it's there. It's in, it's in existence. Praise God. The, the kingdom of God, where is the kingdom? Within you. So why is it some of y'all think that the kingdom is the bricks and mortars? We are the senate that meets on a Sunday to hear what our king, the government, is going to say to us for the week. Not to separate ourselves from the world, but to take over in, 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 in every area of life. There's a lie that's been told in religion where religion said we pray for us to get to heaven. But when you read the kingdom, God trying to come up here, not up. So nobody want to hear about it. Nobody want to hear about it. So now that's a hoodwink from the devil because he wants to keep you in here having your church. But that's why the wicked man is running Hollywood, is running the music production, which the Christian, nice Christian people complain about every Sunday. Oh, why are they singing these type of songs? Because you ain't there. Why are they writing these type of books? Because you ain't writing no books. Huh? And I've been telling you, you've been hoodwinked and horn swaggled. <laughs> And that's why some of you are miserable in church because you know in your heart there's more. Yeah. You know in your heart there's more to God than just for you, just living life. And, and, and guess what? There were some good singers that went into R&B. Yeah. Guess what? The church did ostracize them. Yeah. Yeah. We don't want to deal with you no more because you've been polluted by the world. Right. But how is Jesus said no man lights a light and put it under the bed right. because he bring no light to the house. Yeah. So what do you think Christians are doing when you want to hide yourself from the world and don't want to be part of the world? How is the kingdom supposed to be seen when the kingdom is in you? That's right. Amen. How is it going to be seen? And I think that it is a trigger that the Christian use because we believers, that's what we're supposed to be. Because the word Christian is not nowhere in the Bible. It's nowhere in the Bible. It is believers. We are believers. Amen. Because whatever the word says, we do what? We believe it. Amen. We are believers. And, and Todd, there's nothing wrong with you being a kingdom man. And you love God. And you worship God. And you go to, to um, Hollywood and become an actor. Because guess what you're doing? You bring the kingdom over there. Because they need the kingdom too. Because some of them won't come here. Unless you go to them. They might be like, okay, where you at? So they come where you at. Because we must become what? A fisher of men. And I believe that scripture is wrongly introduced and wrongly um, to be able to understood. How are you going to be fishers of men if you stand up in here? Because I believe in the natural, if we're fishing, we go to a good fishing spot and go get the fishes. Huh? We, we make plans. We have the little hats. We got the stuff. We go fishing, boy. What? We go fishing. And guess what happened? You bring the beers. You bring the, 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 the pretzels. You bring all the stuff. Because you're going fishing. But why is the church fishing in the same pond? In the same pond. That's right. That's right. You convert yourself. We get church hoppers after church hoppers. And we say, why is it that nobody learning? Because I don't want to say it. I'm trying to keep that. You can't teach old dogs new tricks. Some, some people are set up on their way. Now, there's some people who hopping because they're looking for God. But there's some people who just 
church hoppers. Professional church hoppers. <laughs> because unless something is planted, you can't grow. You can't grow. There's nothing wrong with you if you like fashion and you're in the kingdom and you feel like you know, you have to debate with God because if God is going to um, love me because I'm into fashion because the wicked. Let me tell you something. What's better way to put light in darkness? Some people think, oh, you know, I'm the light of the world. I'm preserving myself. I can't deal with unsaved people. No, no, no. Jesus was hanging up with the unsaved people. Jesus was 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 friend with the sinners. Yeah? He was not like them, but he was friend. You see, the thing, the reason you won't, you don't want to be with the world because you know there's some stuff and you you ain't free yet. That's right. Cause like I said. We can't get you to the bar if you haven't been free yet, baby, because we don't have to go back and get you because you are that. The Bible says, be, 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 be all things to all men so that we may win them. And I'm trying to win them. I know. See, you got, you got to be free before you can become an expert fisherman. You got to be free. To be, to be able to get them. Amen. Amen. So I think that's one excuse they use to not deal with the world. Amen. That's, that is. But we love sinners. If you're a kingdom person, we love sinners up in here. Oh Lord, we love them. We love sinners up in here. We love them. The more dirty and the better. <laughs> because, because, because how we how we gonna know if it works? That's right. How we gonna know? <laughs> if it works, if we don't have somebody to work it on. Uh, how are we going to know the gospel of the kingdom works, right? If we're going to go to some sinners and bring them in and wash them with the water of the word so they can come into the kingdom and serve God, then we can actually say, I was listening to something this morning. He said that Moses saw signs of the invisible God. How is it Moses saw the invisible God? How, how do you see the invisible God? He saw his works. Yeah. How many people in here said, we want to see your works? See your works. We want to see somebody that come here cursing, going, doing the quick walk. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Deuce, baby. Deuce. <laughs> and, and, you know, stop doing sign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to do the crip walk. You know, they start doing the crip walk. And then, and then they come in here and they hear the gospel, and all of a sudden, you know, after six months, they come up, oh, praise God, my brother. Hallelujah. Oh, God be praised. We know it works. We know God did something that brother because we know when he first came in, he was doing the brick wall. So we know God touched him. We know God did something. Him, his pants were sagging down to here. Now he wearing suits and shirt with, right. with belt. We know God just come on. We know God did something with him. Come on. You know that when God really touch you, a lot of people in religion, when people come to church, they're trying to tell them change their clothes. You don't need to tell them to change right. their clothes. Clothes. Tell clothes. Tell them what you need to do is let them get the word of God. And the word, and one day they're going to come dress, you know, because the more word gets under the spirit of God, begin to convict them. You don't need to come. Who, who are you supposed to Fashion police, oh baby, that skirt too short. But you forgot when you first came in, yours was up here. In the church. Ah, he is. Huh? Until God came in and God touched your heart and the kingdom of God began to work in you and God began to bring the change and the transformation. I'm going to start again. God's kingdom is not of this world. Right? But it works in this earth because he put it inside of us. It works in this earth because what? It works inside where? Of us. Praise God. Amen. However, we have to work the principles of the kingdom 
in order to receive its benefits. We find the principles of the kingdom of God in the Bible. Therefore, we will need to know the truth of God's word to understand how his kingdom works. A lot of Christian, I'm sorry to say, does not read the Constitution, which is the word of God. They do not read it. They don't practice reading. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I say it's the truth. And that's the problem. That if I ask, if I take a toll, some people will tell me I don't have the time. Okay, let me let me tell you how much time you got. Facebook. How many watch scandal? How many people watch scandal? Okay. See, some people just stay there. God there's more of you who watch scandal. Oh no, you know, he ain't gonna trick me. I'm not gonna put up my hands. <laughs> Okay, if you got one hour to watch scandal, if you some some people spend four hours on Facebook alone, you can take 15 minutes or even what start with one chapter a day just to get your cut. One chapter, one chapter is not too much. Matter of fact, this ministry needs to start reading one chapter a day, one chapter a day, because some Christian does not practice reading the Word of God. That's a problem for some of us. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that, 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 that you don't love Jesus. It's not your practice. But if you're going to live a successful life, you got to read it. Amen. Huh? Amen. you got to know what the word God, or what God says concerning you being part of the Amen. kingdom of God. Huh? you got to know what it says concerning you. You can't just have the Bible there and you pick it up when you're in trouble. Can I tell you something? By the time you're in trouble, it's too late. Can I tell you something? I don't do my confession and sickness scriptures when I'm sick. Even when I'm well, I do it. I don't wait till I have money problems for me to say my God should supply all my needs. I do it way before that. You know what that does? Now, if I am going to meet a guy 300 pounds and me and him going to have a fight within a year, right? I'm just going to give you, me and him going to have a fight within a year. I have time to prepare to meet him, right? Some of you will worry. Some of you will take karate. <laughs> Let me get some judo before that day. But some of your wives will start lifting up weights. You begin to build up your body, right? Because you know you're gonna meet that God when you when when you come to that time to meet him. But but um I guess he wants the word. I think he's going out now. Um but when you lift weights and your body begins to grow after one year, you pack on muscle, guess what's begin to grow before you meet that God? Confidence. Huh? You begin to meet what? Confidence. Do you understand what I'm saying? You begin to meet confidence, and then when that time comes and that big God comes, guess what you do? I'm more able to meet him now because I prepared myself for when he comes, I'm able to deal with it. Well, that's what the Word of God deals when you go to different issues and problems concerning your health, your finances, and everything else. I've already prepared myself so when it comes, it's not an emergency. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not an emergency. I'm ready for it. I'm not panicking. I'm not coming to the pastor. <laughs> Crying and going crazy. No, no, I'm ready. But some people deal with life with too much emergency. Huh? Too much emergency. That's when, you know, life becoming in jeopardy, you know, not, uh, um, the emergency. That's when you come to church when life is emergency. That's when you pray when life is emergency. Huh? That's when you worship when life becomes an emergency. You should never wait when life is an emergency for God to show up. There's somebody here, um, not here, but who was here, who baby died. And they saw the word. And they did things. And I asked God, why is it this happened? What happened in that situation? I need to understand. And he said, they sold, they did this. And the Lord began to speak to me. He said, first of all, they did it the wrong way. I didn't kill them, but they did it the wrong way. 
right? Mm -hmm. um, they did it the wrong way. And I said, well, they sold your principle. Why is it didn't work? He said, well, they did it the wrong way, and they, oh, see, the enemy came in and killed something that they had, but he said it had nothing to do with me. I said, then what happened with the sewing? They did. They said, well, they started sewing too late. That's what he said to me. He said they sold too late. He said they should have been sewing from the beginning concerning that baby. And, and the thing is, I know what God said to me, I'm no baby killer. There's only one killer. Yeah. Satan, not me. And that person got angry at God and never stepped into church because they felt God is the one that killed the baby because of ignorance. And guess who won that fight? The devil. Yeah. I'm telling somebody, God ain't in the, in the job of killing no babies. Right. Save or unsaved. If you did it out of red light or not, a red light, he's not the one that killed babies. But it's, but it, what does kill them is if you open the door to the enemy, the enemy is the one that killed it. But job, but God is no person that says, you know, I'm going to kill. Then if it was up to that, a whole bunch of us be dead. Yeah. Avoid it. So God is not the killer of babies. Guess who's the killer here? Satan. Remember that. Say, some people are in church mad at God because they think God did it. I'm speaking for my dad. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't killing nobody. He don't kill nobody. He don't kill. He's a preserver of life. Huh? Oh, they did wrong. They, oh, they're a sinner. We understand that most of us sin and we did wrong. But guess what? God still stand up for us and kept us. So he's not in the job of killing nobody. The way, see the thing, the only person that opened the door so the enemy the worst is us. God is the protector, not the killer. I just wanted to make that that um, straight because I had a problem I need to ask God. Now God has designed his kingdom to function in a certain way. In order to separate ourselves from the world system and operate in God's system, we need to seek and live by the truth of the word. Amen. What does the Bible say? We need to seek and what? And, 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 and live by what? The truth of the word. Amen. The truth will make us what? Free from the entanglements of the world system. Most of you, you read the word, but you really don't believe it's God's word. That's why you're not free from the system. That's when that's why when he asks you to do something, you won't do it. You got to understand what you hold in. You don't need a prophet to tell you, blah, 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 blah. Our oh, God's thus said the Lord. God is speaking to you, right? He quote, you got, you got him in your lap. He's the closest. Read his word. That's where he at. When you read his word, you got to understand that his word is real. Whatever he tells me, don't try to compromise it in your thinking. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Whatever he says is true. Whatever he says is right. Somebody says amen. amen. Now, Jesus said, John 8, where's my reader? John 8, 31. Is my reader talking? Come on, where's my reader at? I'm distracted, but I'm sorry. All right. I'll meet you up here. Stop talking. Right. Where's my reader? John, John, John 8. Chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. I won't be able to finish this whole thing, but go ahead. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you shall know the truth, and what? The truth, the truth shall make you free. The truth, the word of God shall what? Make you free. Do you know something? A lot of people want to be free from a whole bunch of bondage. You don't get free just by laying on hands. It is a commitment. Freedom comes from what? Hearing God's word. Who said it? Jesus said it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you hear the word, and what is the word going to do? Make you free. Now, why do you think Satan wants, wants to stop people when it's Bible study time? When it's Sunday time? You all tired now on a Sunday? Come on, during, during Monday to Friday, you get up at 6 Get in the bus, in the snow, in the rain, in the cold, and you go into your job. But let it be Sunday. Let it be Bible study day. All of a sudden, there's a spirit of laziness that hits you. No, spirit of dispatch. 
and spirit hits you. Oh, let me sleep for another hour. <laughs> no. The most difficult thing for you to hear is when the word is being preached. Come on. Have you ever seen somebody, when it comes to the worship, everybody, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> and then the word comes in. Right. <laughs> you're laying down because you know what? The enemy's putting you to sleep because he knows that if you ever hear the word of God, do you know that you may be, you may have been one word away from being free, Amen. and he keeps you from coming? Amen. God, you know that you you can be one word from being blessed financially, yes. and he keeps you that Sunday from coming to church or coming that Thursday, and guess what? Boom, you go right back on the line again because your faith went down because for one week or two weeks or three weeks. There have to be consistency. Oh, you know about that, Ms. Sean. When you're working somebody, and you don't want to work somebody who come every other week, <laughs> you're wasting my time, man. Take your money and go. Because you're wasting my time. Because if, if, there, if there's going to be results, you got to get consistency. Oh, God have mercy. So Jesus said, and you shall know the word, and the word shall do what? Make you free. Do what? Consistency. Hear the word. Religion think that you're going to get blessed because I just come and lay hands on you. And I believe God can do it that way because that's when he does miracle. But if you don't have no roots. That's right. Oh, God. You can be free now. I lay hands on you. You're free. But by... But by Monday, the devil going to be waiting for you, baby, at your job. He's going to be waiting for you, wherever he's waiting on you for. And all of a sudden, Big Jimmy with the big muscle going to meet you. He said, what's up, baby? Oh, Lord. You gone. He twinked the muscle inside. And you, and you like, Whoo, what happened? What's going, what's going on? I don't know, guys. It just happened. Now, now, if, <laughs> now, if the if you got strong in the word and Big Jimmy come and you understand the word of God is in you and the word has made you free, when Jimmy come, whatever was controlling you to soul tie to Jimmy is broken. Right. So when Jimmy come flexing, oh, get out of here, get out of here. I'm free from you. The word made me free. So if you're ever going to be free, Jesus said, and not me, the word is what's going to make you free. Ah, did, you, did you read verse 32? That's the one he read. That was it. Did you read 31? No, he didn't read that. Read 31 and 32. If you, continue in if you continue consistency, see, I was saying it all along. If you continue, what is continuing? Uh, consistency, um, repetition, every time, go on, read. If you continue my word, then you are my disciples. In then the you are my disciples. Don't say, you see, discipleship, people think because you come into the church a couple of times, that makes you a disciple. Disciple is people that continue in something. You constantly there. You constantly doing what? Do you know what makes you a disciple? Bearing fruits. If you've been with me for a long time, you don't got no fruit, you ain't my disciple. After four years, we must see some fruits. After two years, a couple of months, we need to see fruits up in here. Oh, Pastor, I'm your disciple. Now, now, where's the fruits? We need to see fruits go on. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Without the truth, we can't break free from the world system. Without the truth, because some of y'all are so much entangled on how the world works. Because from the time you were, um, you see your little daughter right here, right? She don't know nothing about the world system yet. She going to get trained on it. Through what? School. But if you begin to teach her the principle of the kingdom, which is the word, and I bet you you're going to have a superwoman in your hands. Because she understands that the world can keep her from getting anything that she, that, 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 that she can believe God for. Amen. Because this system, you train on it from the time you go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. They teach you numbers. They teach you all these things. They teach you all these other things from high school. In high school, they say you can't have a living without you going to college. And you ain't going to have no money. 
in college, you know, you know, unless you went to college. And guess what? A part of you believe it. Now, the reason that you don't have is not because that God, there's nowhere in the Bible that says that God only works through a college diploma. It don't say that. But it sure has been implanted in your mind by your teachers and the people that you went to school that you'll be nothing without a college diploma. So because you have it, you because you don't have it, subconsciously your faith act up to keep you down because you've been believing what you've been hearing. Right. 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 All right. Okay. Now I dare to tell you there's some guys like Carla G. Hall who went to fourth grade and they become multi-millionaires. But it's been embedded on you unless you do what the system does, you'll never be nothing. But I come here to shatter that system. Yes. That's right. I come here to tell you, you can be anything that Jesus wants you to be. Amen. I come here to tell you that you don't have to be limited by man That's or right. by the world system and by what they tell you and what they say you can't achieve. Nashawn, you can be anything that you dare dream to believe God for that's in his word. Oh, Lord. You're not limited by no diploma. You're not limited by what people, my God, the income they say you can't make. If you have Jesus, Amen. if you can believe Amen. that Jesus, right. then my God, he that's can right. supply your need. He Boom. can make you good. Now, am I saying is something wrong with going to school and no. having a diploma? No, I'm not. Because I know some dumb people with diplomas. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> having a piece of paper does not mean you're smart. Okay, let me get let me tell you something. Let me give you an example. I can run something. Um, I was listening to something. They put in this guy in jail. I think um, I, I forgot the company this week. Barney. He, what is it? Barney. Barney's. He made a fake diploma, mm -hmm. and then he went in and he was running it. He was doing a good job until they found out it was a fake diploma. So now they got a problem with it. Because why? Because they found out that he lied and the diploma was fake. But the key is they forgot he was doing a good darn job without going to diploma. You understand? Now, diploma, college, is part of the system that makes money in this world. It is it. You pay $40,000 for somebody to give you a piece of paper. Really, when you go to a workforce, you don't really, the things that you learn in school, you don't do on the job. You only, you only, the only thing it does, the $40,000 does, or $50,000 or $100,000, open the doors That's to good. give you an entry, but it don't give you smart no wisdom. All you do is paying your way through. That's it. 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 Nothing to do. There's some dumb people running the corporation. Yeah. Look at the country that we put uh, uh, the place in it. Some dumb people running Senate. Oh, See, nobody want to say it. There's some dumb people, but guess what? Because now we say people are smart. To me, they, who's the smartest man in the world? You know who it is, right? No. The guy in the wheelchair. Bill? They said. Not Bill Gates. Um, no, nah, no. It's, it's a guy in a wheelchair. Yeah, he's a handicapped guy. And oh, they say he's a. Did he play for um, Superman at one point? What's his name? No, not him. No, no, no. Nope. no. Yeah. It's a guy in a wheelchair. Um, no, I know he's a. He's a Cosmo guy. He's a, 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 a human history child. They say he's the smartest guy. And I ask God, why is he the smartest guy? I say, he ain't the smartest guy. If you ask him. Now, we listen to people. God is taking me so. He's, he's, you guys listen to people, right? If Oprah gives you wisdom and you do it for your marriage, but why is it when Jesus tells you how to work it, you won't? That's right. That's right. And open your marriage. Paul said that. Jesus said, "You believe your writers." When the the, the lady that wrote um the books and uh you know the witch book. Yeah, Iyana Vanza. Y'all listen to her, and you won't even question them people. And where they get their wisdom from and how to do it. But let the preacher tell you what the word said. All of a sudden, you're going to say, Why should I do it? Because you believe the children of this world is wiser than God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to bring you up. I'm trying to think. Because if I show you the word, you got a problem. You don't believe the word. If, 
if, if I say God exists, you don't believe it. If Prophet Marlin come to prophesy and say, God's going to do this, you won't. But let a psychic come tell you. <laughs> you won't question where they're from and where they're getting their answer from. You know, oh, my mama talked to me. <laughs> 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 Just because they come, no, 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 I'm going to come with it. Because just because they come, uh, there's an M, M. Anybody start with an M? Of course somebody up in here going to have a mama start with an M. Oh, got it. Tell me what's her name. Don't do it. There's an M. There's an M. Uh, uh, Mary, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And then he said, yeah, there's a Mary standing next to you. Woo. She right there. Mm. <laughs> no, they believe it. They believe it because now they believe it because now I look at it. I say, why is it they're willing to believe the world because they are of the world? Because when you see Jesus said in the first book of John, because they don't believe because they're not of me. So those who are of God believe. So most of us, even Christian, are moving into that pattern of belief. We question the word of God. What that mean? Now, now, now I got to come in the Hebrew and bring out the word to bring more understanding because you can't believe it in English. <laughs> <laughs> Give me more word. Lord, Lord, Lord. Give me more word because you don't believe in English. I bring out the Hebrew now. Let me bring the Amorite word and try to get you to believe it. It's clear for what we are to believe. And it is clear what truth is. And if I ask you guys what is truth, his word is truth. That's the only thing. Jesus said, let God be true, let every man be a liar. Amen. That's right, that's right. Including the people that you listen to in the talk show and you're gonna do what they say. If they don't know how to work their marriage, how you gonna tell them you how to work yours? You don't got no success, and you're going to tell me how to do it. Now, anyway. Remember, as kingdom citizens, we are in the world, but not what? Okay. Of the world. The ecclesia is not to withdraw from the world, for we are what? The light of the world. The head of, this, of the wicked. This whole world system is established on a foundation that God didn't build. Satan can't create anything, and he can't think of anything new. So he took God's pattern and prevented it. The reason he's able to manipulate the people to have no relationship with God. So guess what he does? He manipulates something, God's system. The government is based on God's kingdom, Amen. but without God. Mm -hmm. That's true. To manipulate you and hoodwink you and thinking that the source is them. Mm -hmm. So that's when you watch the news and say, you know what? Uh, uh, um, the economy is in trouble. So what? I don't care. I'm going to eat. I'm going to drink. Amen. Because my kingdom said Matthew 6, right. 33. Right. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Amen. And all of his righteousness. And all of these things shall be what? Added on to me. That's I don't right. care what they say. I don't That's care right. what's going on. Right. I'm seeking God's kingdom. I'm blessed. Matter of fact, in the 1920s, in the roaring 20s, my God, in the time of depression, we had more millionaires in the depression than we had at any other time. Because they didn't believe in God. They dare seek God. They dare look for God. And that's what it is. Can I tell you something? When, when there's great darkness, the light becomes more brighter. Oh, <laughs> ah, glory. glory. When there's great darkness, the light becomes more brighter, baby. So I don't care what you're saying. It's getting dark out there. Good. Because getting lighter in here. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. The light is beginning to light up even more than it ever been. Now, now look at Psalm 82, 3 and 5. It is God's system. Amen. It is God's system. It doesn't matter what it says. It is God's system. Go on. Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. You see that? Rid them what? Out of the hand out of the, of the wicked. Who's supposed to rid them out of the hand of the you wicked? Are. You are. How are you supposed to rid them out of the hand of the wicked and you don't got no money? Mm-mm. How are you supposed to rid them out of the hand of the wicked and you don't got nothing? You broke. You got to believe. Can I tell you something? Just like you believe God to save you, believe God to prosper you. Amen. Uh, 
Just like, just like, don't listen to religion. Don't ask God to bless you. He don't care if you die. He don't care if you eat. He don't care if you drink. That's a lie.